All right guys, so this video is the genetics video and I can recall from my step one experience getting questions with the uh, the pedigree on there. So the goal of this video is to kind of teach kind of a flow that we can make sure that we can identify all the, you know, whether it's mitochondrial versus um, dominant recessive, autosomal, X-linked, all that kind of stuff. So we'll kind of kind of teach that or at least kind of my, my way of flowing through it. And you know, make sure that you understand, uh, you know, how to put stuff in the categories. I mean, this is kind of a, a laminated sheet that I had made for myself, just so I had, I could memorize all the autosomal dominant uh, conditions and the recessive and, and and so on. So that's a it's a key piece. Uh, so we'll kind of do a you know several videos here, and we'll try to cover as many questions and many question types as we can. Hopefully, it'll, so you won't see any questions for the first time on your uh, step exam. So hope you like the video. All right, guys. So here is the genetics video and you know a question like this uh, you're definitely going to see on on the step exams uh, they're going to give you a pedigree for your answer choices and you'll have to kind of determine a diagnosis so we got to we got to know this and so we're going to develop kind of a little a little system here that you can you can kind of work uh, to determine whether something is um, autosomal or x-linked or dominant or recessive and, and so on so the first thing you want to do is look at these and determine is it in every generation? Okay, when you, and when you look at the generation, you gotta follow it on down to make sure that it doesn't skip anywhere, okay? Because um, if there was something like, say, down here and it skipped a generation, then it wouldn't be considered dominant. But in all these, it's in every generation. So if it's in every generation, I want you to either think, for the first part, I want you to think mitochondrial or dominant okay mitochondrial dominant and we're gonna go ahead and rule out the mitochondrial right off the bat because remember the rule for mitochondrial is gonna be mom to all okay so let's look at these remember mom is gonna be the circle so we gotta have a positive mom so there's none in this one and remember in mitochondrial dad does not pass it along so in this one uh, dad has it and mom doesn't and then mom has it not to kids so this is those two are definitely not mitochondrial in this one, mom has it and she passes it to all her kids. Mom has it and she passes it to all her kids. Mom has it and passes it to all her kids. So again, it looks like it's in every, it's obviously in every generation since there's females there. So despite it looking like it's, it's dominant, you gotta see this one is mitochondrial. So always use this one first, is that when mom passes it to all her, sibling, to all her kids, you gotta be thinking it's mitochondrial, okay? And now, once you take care of that, now you're left with every generation, you know that it's going to be obviously dominant. And so now the question becomes, is it autosomal or is it going to be X-linked? And here's where you're always going to, what you're always going to do. You're always going to go to X-linked and ask the question, okay? You're always going to go to X-linked and ask the question. The question will be, is it positive dad gives me positive daughter and no male to male, okay? Ask those questions because uh, that will lead you to this and then you'll default otherwise to the autosomal. So again, first thing, rule out mitochondrial. Second thing, you know it's dominant, go to the X-linked question. So now I look at this and I say, does a positive dad give me, a po give me the positive daughter? In this situation, yes, you know, Positive dad gave me positive daughter. Now there's no more examples in this in this small chart. Here, positive dad did not give me the positive daughter. So right now it's very supportive. Now to, to lock it in to X-link dominant, I gotta ask the question: No male to male uh, transit. Uh, it's no male to male um, inheritance. So here's the male, and again, no male to male. Okay, and that's in here. In this one, it has male to male. So obviously. This one right here is gonna be our X-linked dominant, okay? And then when it's in every generation, males pre pretty much equal females, and then these rules don't take effect, you're gonna say it's autosomal dominant, okay? But you see it, every generation, I want you to think it's either mitochondrial or dominant, rule out mitochondrial first, and then when you see the dominant, I want you to ask the X-linked questions. And if they're supportive, Go with that X-linked. If they're not, you're going to default to the autosomal. Okay, so that's how you're going to handle every generation. Now, when we see something like this, same scenario applies. So, is it in every generation? Now, when you look at this, you're thinking, oh my gosh, it's probably every generation. But let's take a little bit closer look. If I start here and go down, 
it skips a generation, right? If I'm on this guy and I went down to the center, it skipped a generation. So this is not going to be dominant. And, you know, but I, I still want to rule out the mitochondrial. Okay, I'm always going to do that. Mom gave to all her kids? No. Uh, mom gave to all her kids? No. So mitochondrial's off the table. Good. So now I'm just left with recessive, okay? I'm just left with recessive. And then I ask myself the same thing. It's, I put autosomal and I put X-linked. Now, I ask the X-linked question. Only men from unaffected parents, okay? Only men from unaffected parents, so let's see it. Here's unaffected parents and only men, check. So this one could meet the criteria for X-linked recessive. Um, unaffected parents and I got a female, so that one doesn't meet the criteria. So again, I just want you to ask the X-linked question and if it's supportive on this, then you're gonna go with X-linked. And again, no, there should be, um, yeah. Now, sometimes these charts can, you know, there can be kind of a, a combination, and like if someone else kind of came in with some other type of um, dominant or something. So when I see this, when I see something as positive as, as this, I just kind of rule that, for the most part, just ignore that. I know it's kind of, you're thinking, well, where, where, where did that come from? In step one, they're gonna give you that kind of nonsense. But again, we don't know much about this person right here. So we're just gonna follow down through it and say this inheritance pattern for right here is gonna be recessive. There's no there's no male to male um, going down this with from this person and it's the only men from unaffected parents. So it meets criteria for X-linked recessive. Okay? And then, uh, again, same thing on this. I'm just gonna get rid of this, this one side for right now. Is only men from unaffected parents? No. Um, so it can't it doesn't meet criteria for being X-linked and it, we, it skips a generation. So I'm gonna default to autosomal recessive. Okay? So you see when it skips a generation, you think recessive, you go rule out the mitochondrial and then ask the X-linked question, okay? Ask the X-linked question. And again, these examples, I should have not, not put all this other excess stuff in here because um, again, in X-linked, for X-linked to not confuse you, there should be no, no, male, uh, no male to male. So that takes us back to our original question. It says, a 28-year-old Italian-American male presents back to his primary care provider for progressive weakness. He was seen within the past two weeks for upper respiratory infection. He reports being compliant with his antibiotic. He is confused as to why he is feeling so fatigued and has discoloration of his urine. Blood pressure, 90 over 65, pulse 102, 10, 37.2. He reports that an uncle had similar issues with medications. Which of the following is the most closely associated with the inheritance of this patient's condition? So again, classic step one level question. You know, they're expecting you to get the diagnosis, and then from that, you're supposed to know what, what the inheritance pattern is, and then match it to what kind of pedigree is shown. So this is where you have to have the conditions memorized. So when you look at this guy, Italian American, you know, he took an antibiotic, now he's got discoloration of the urine, you know, he's got some, some uh, hemolytic anemia per se going on, that's why his pulse, his, his heart, every, everything's working a little bit more. Um, so what does this guy got? All right, this guy's got G6 uh, PD deficiency, right? All based on, you know, kind of, you know, Italian American, Mediterranean uh, descent, that kind of thing. Now, you have to know G6PD is what type of inheritance pattern, and you gotta have that memorized, okay? It's, it's X-linked recessive. So then you have to look and say, which of these is, re is X-linked recessive? Well, just by looking at them, you know that there's a generation skip here. So I know that this is gonna be, this, out of all these, there's, there's none of them that have a generation skip, so I know this is gonna be my recessive. Um, you know, only, only males from unaffected parents. Remember that was the question that I asked and it's like, yes, yes. So that's confirmed that this is X-linked recessive. Um, I go with C. But for the sake of, of learning, let's, let's look at these. This is in every generation, so what do I do? I rule out mitochondrial, then I just go straight to dominant, right? Let me see, positive mom to all, to all her kids. Nope, so I know it's not mitochondrial. So then it's dominant, and I ask myself, autosomal or X-linked dominant? So where do I go? I go to my X-linked and I ask the question, does positive dad 
to a positive daughter, okay? And then no male to male. Does it meet criteria? Let's see. Positive dad goes to daughters, yes. Um, and that's the only one for that. No male to male, yes. So it meets the criteria. So this one's looking like a pretty strong X-linked dominant. So I look at this one. It looks like it's dominant, yes. Does it? So then I would, again, I would go down and say, okay, I asked the, the X-linked question. Uh, does positive dad to positive daughter? Um, let me see, I don't have any criteria for that. And then, uh, you know, no, no male, no male to male. Um, well, it doesn't have that, you know, it doesn't have that either. So in theory, you know, positive dad, positive daughter. So, you know, this one could be, you know, could be the same as it's, you know, it's kind of almost a little bit on the confusing side. So I must be missing something, right? What did I do wrong on this? What did I, what, did I, what step did I forget? I forgot to rule out mitochondrial, right? Positive mom to all her kids, yes. Positive mom to all her kids, yes. Uh, I almost went down my uh, down a, a dark path there, and I would have got pretty confused, right? You gotta stick with the plan, you, and so whenever you see again, it's even though it looks dominant, I almost went straight to this. I sh I gotta rule out mitochondrial. Always do that first. But back to this question, it's G6PD. You gotta know it's X, X linked recessive, and use the flow chart, and you'll get all these questions right. This one says, a 12-year-old is suspected of having an inherited disorder. A pedigree analysis shows the following uh, pedigree. Um, it says, the patient is most likely suffering from which of the following? This is another way that the step exams will, 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 um, will test you. So is it every generation? Uh, yes, but again, I better do what? I better rule out mitochondrial first before I say it's dominant. But I'm gonna set this up just so I can, um, you know, just so I can kinda have some type of system. So mitochondrial, positive mom to all her kids, no. So mitochondrial is ruled out, good. So I know it's dominant. So then I go there and I say, what are my, what are my questions? What are the excellent questions? Positive dad to positive daughter, and then no male to male, okay? All right, so positive dad to positive daughter, yes, it meets that, and then no male to male, good. So it meets criteria for um, for being autosome, um, I'm sorry, X-linked dominant, okay? X-linked dominant. So then I have to say, um, so then I have to say, okay, which of these following or fall in that category? And again, this is all, you gotta have this memorized. Hemophilia A, that's X-linked uh, recessive. Beta thalassemia, autosomal recessive. Hypercholesterolemia, autosomal dominant. Von Willenbrand's, autosomal dominant. Fragile X, X-linked dominant, okay? You had, you know, you had to know what this is, follow the flow chart, mitochondrial, and then look for the autosomal, ask the excellent questions. You knew it was excellent dominant, and then you gotta know the categories. It can be as simple as that, or they could put descriptions of these down here. That's, but if you know all those ways, all those type of scenarios, there's nothing they can ask you on step one that you won't be able to get. And then a different question that I've also kind of seen how they can ask it is this. In the above pedigree, what is the probability that A is a carrier of the trait? Okay, so when I look at this, I'm like, all right, so the parents didn't have it, yet these kids did. They're asking, what's the chance that this person is a carrier? Now, this is just some basic, basic math stuff here. So I think, you know, back to the whole high school um, biology class. And so the parents, right? Let's just say mom and then dad's over here. And let's just use um, let's use the word letter A, okay, big A, and then little A, because obviously this is some type of recessive uh, recessive gene here, um, and then dad uh, big A little A, and then it's this little A that's that's all messed up, right? It's a little A that's all messed up. So we know that these guys both got this box right here, right? They, they you know both both those siblings from A got this box because they present with the condition. So let's fill out the other box. This guy's got good gene, good gene. This guy, this box has good gene, bad gene. And then this box has good gene, bad gene. So with that being said, 
what's the probability that this person is a I'm sorry, this person is a carrier? Okay, a carrier. Well, if you look at all the scenarios, you know, sometimes people just want to jump on say 50% because it's like, oh, well, it must be one of these two if they're a carrier, right? Well, not so fast because we can eliminate this box right here, right? We can eliminate that because if, if they were in that box, what would they look like? Oh, they would be all filled in, right? Because they would have the condition. So we eliminate this box. So now we're left with these three boxes. Now out of those three, which of those, you know, out of those three, how many chances of, her, of them being a carrier? Two, right? So the correct answer, two out of three. And that's just some basic math, but I've seen it work like this. So again, the purpose of doing like all these types of questions is just that you can see all the different scenarios of how they ask it, um, so that you so that you just won't you know we don't want you to see something for the first time on this on this step. So to study for this, you need to categorize all the conditions. Okay, and that's a must, a flat out must. All the autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X linked, and so on. Then I want you to is it every, you know, look at the generation. Is it, is it every generation? Is it all the generations or not all of them, okay? And then from that, you're either gonna say it's mitochondrial or, or dominant, or you're gonna rule out mitochondrial and recessive, okay? And then it's autosomal X-linked, and then um, autosomal and X-linked, and you're always gonna ask the X-linked question. You're always gonna ask the X-linked question. And for the, for the dominant, it's, remember, it's de positive dad to positive daughter and no male to male. And if it meets criteria, boom, you go with, I'm sorry, you, you go with the X-linked dominant. And then on this one, on the, in the recessive, um, you're going to say it's going to be the X-linked, you're going to ask the um, X-linked, and it's only males from unaffected parents, no male to male, okay? Ask that question, it meets criteria, you go with X-linked recessive. Otherwise, you, then you'll default to the autosomal, okay? Now guys, you got to, um, and again, this is kind of something that I, that I had done, is I made this, you know, I made this sheet, kind of, you know, laminated it. Um, it's got the ophthalmology on the other side, but, you know, just, you, you got to have this stuff memorized, what falls in each category, because then you can start playing all these you know, all the tricks and stuff like that with, with all this, okay? So create something like this, and um, we'll, we'll put out more questions and see if we can practice more, and we'll, we'll do well in the step. Hope this was helpful.